Welcome friends to another exciting episode of Let's Talk DevOps. And today we all are here to understand what exactly does the concept of shift left mean in the world of software and DevOps. So let's find out with our expert, Thomas Goldberger. Hey Thomas, welcome and take it away. Hi Sharesh, and thanks for having me again to this exciting format. Um, and sure, I'm happy to um, tell you about my thoughts on shift left and what it means, uh, especially in DevOps environment. So basically, shift left um, is a part of the testing life cycle. And it, it describes um, best practices to shift testing to the left, um, which means shift testing to the early stages of the development life cycle. In order to achieve that, we use practices such as test-driven development and behavior-driven development. However, um, there are also practices that apply the same principles to infrastructure and deployment automation. Okay, that sounds like a great concept. Uh, but tell me, when a dev team implements uh, unit tests, does it mean they're already using shift left? It's a step in the right direction, right? So. Unit tests are part of um, shift left approach, right? But we need more than that. So a full shift left approach um, tests not only a single unit, which unit tests does, but it also tests the integration um, and the regression regression um, as early as possible, um, but also frequently. So it's not just one hit and go, but it's need to be done like every single integration. Um, the goal is to uncover and prevent to hit defects in the production. All right. And in terms of the time and money, uh, when a team uses the shift left approach, can it reduce any costs and testing efforts as well? So it obviously boils down to the question for money, right? But it's a yes and a no. Um, mm. In the long run, we will reduce costs, but more importantly, we will increase the overall um, experience and quality. However, we will not reduce costs for testing or reduce testing efforts at all, right? Um, let me explain, explain that a little bit. So when we uncover defects, regressions or bugs or any kind of issues in the early development stage, we reduce the risk to exposing those to the end user in the production environment. It, would re it will reduce the risk um, of needing um, emergency releases or hot fixes or rollbacks or something like that, right? Um, which is a huge stress relief, but also time saver and a money saver. So in addition to that, overall feel of the quality soft of the quality in the software feels for the end user way more better right yeah. so but on the other hand we need to provide um, a quality safety net and we need to increase the testing effort to achieve those kinds of goals so in the long run, when we focus on test automation efforts for API tests, end-to-end -end tests, and all that jazz, we will reduce costs because we automated a lot of stuff. But in the beginning, there is no cost reduction. Um, sometimes it even increases the costs because we have to build the R&D into that test automation stuff. OK, sounds interesting. And uh, I also recall in the beginning, you mentioned that uh, the shift left approach and these principles can be applied to infrastructure and code deployment, uh, which seems uh, quite intriguing. So, so could you please explain uh, that approach as well? Yes, yeah, sure, with pleasure. That's why we're here, right? So as we mentioned before, shift left testing approach, right? And this can only be successful if we have an early access to the um, newly developed features, right? So to achieve those kinds of things, the development team needs to have access to a whole bunch of stuff, like um, we're talking servers, we're talking um, web services, we're talking storage space, exposed APIs, config management, and all that stuff that needs a software to run, right? Um, 
this is only possible if we if we can provide them with the tools to build um, an, an production environment or um, a clone of a production production environment. So we're talking about best practices or good practices. We're talking about um, clone of uh, a scaled down clone of a production environment. And this is where the shift left mindset hits. Um, with the proper automation of the infrastructure, keyword is in that case infrastructure as code or EAC, and with the help of CI/CD pipelines to deploy the infrastructure and the code of the application, we will have a set up with the possibility to test deployments. And this is the impo important part. We test not only the application, but also the deployments and the configuration management of the infrastructure. Um, in the early stages of the software development lifecycle, right? Um, and we can test this before we go into the production environment. And we are sure that this is working and there are no, not that often these major issues. Um, it is true it's easier with applications that are born in the cloud, right? Because they naturally set up the system like that. However, it's possible with legacy applications as well. Um, we don't have the time to go into that as well, but I wrote a blog article um, to this format as well, and there I'll talk a little bit about uh, um, legacy applications and what steps need to be done generally to get um, into the cloud or get a shift left approach for legacy applications on-prem. Wow. Thank you for this wonderful session, Thomas. It was truly insightful as always. You're welcome. And friends, if you want to learn more about Shift Left, just check out our blog, as Thomas just mentioned, and get insights about it, and feel free to get in touch with our experts. And we also welcome you all to please let us know through your comments. If you have any interesting DevOps-related topic or any important DevOps query that you'd like us to talk about, We'll be happy to include all your inputs in our upcoming episodes. With that, it's a wrap for now. We'll see you on the other side. But until next time, keep talking DevOps. Bye.